Hi guys, uh, James here with you on Saturday night, uh, Vinyl Professor. Um, just going to do a feature um, on one of the great British drummers. I'm sure you'll all recognise him, or some of you may not recognise him, some of you undoubtedly will. I know there's a lot of prog rock fans on the VC. Talking about Bill Bruford, <clears throat> one of the great uh, inventors really, I suppose, of prog rock drumming, progressive rock drumming. He was there right at the beginning with Yes, King Crimson, uh, and then later on um, in his, well he was in Genesis for a while, and then he went on to form his own band Earthworks. Um, the reason that I want to talk about Bill Bruford, well there's just, there's a couple of reasons. The first one is that I've always really, really liked uh, his playing. Um, you know, I'm a drummer, as I keep saying on these videos, I'm becoming more and more conscious, I keep saying it, but I am one. Um, and, uh, you know, if you're a drummer, then Bill Bruford is one of those people that you have to uh, pay homage to, really, because uh, he was incredibly inventive, incredibly clever. In a minute, I'm going to get on to talking a little bit about some of his drum um, music that he's done over the years, you know, quite amazing. Um, but I'm going to tell you another little story, a Bill Bruford based story, and that is the day that Bill Bruford phoned me up. <clears throat> I think I mentioned this in, in, in a previous video, one or two people uh, took an interest in it. I know Rob Boston took an interest and I ended up mailing him, hi Rob, um, because I wanted to uh, tell him the story. I didn't know when I was going to make this video. Uh, so anyway, but I'm going to explain what happened now. Um, a few years ago, this is going back about 10 years, I was stuck in a, in a job that I didn't like at all. It was a an office job in Leeds, uh, really nice people, it was a perfectly good job but it just wasn't my kind of thing, you know, I was working in finance and so on and uh, I wasn't very good at it really and I wasn't that happy there and, um, well, you know, I was kind of happy enough there in terms of the people and, and so on but, uh, you know, it wasn't really my kind of thing and um, just out of the blue I saw one day there was a, a concert happening in Manchester and it was Bill Bruford with um, Earthworks this was the acoustic version of Earthworks, because uh, Earthworks had started originally as a kind of electronic project back in the 1980s, uh, where, where Bill was using a lot of uh, electronic drums, you know, MIDI triggers on his drums and so on. But this was the later incarnation of Earthworks, where it had become an acoustic ensemble. And um, this is what was great about Bill, is that he'd been in this massive, huge prog rock band, you know, Yes and he'd been one of the founding fathers of the progressive music scene, but he was now a jazz musician, so therefore you could go and see him in very small venues, you know, you could talk to him, you could meet him. I didn't actually meet him, but um, you could, it was quite easily, you know, he was. He became a very accessible figure, and I think that was out of choice, you know, he didn't want to be, he didn't want to be a big rock star, that was the whole thing about Bill Bruford, he, he kind of wanted to be a jazz musician, he wanted to be just a normal guy, you know, playing music. Um, anyway, I, I went along to this concert and uh, it was just a recital at the Royal Northern College of Music in Manchester and um, it was a really good concert, I really enjoyed it and uh, I sat at my desk the next day at work and I just started thinking, this is the kind of thing that they publish reviews of in the Guardian newspaper. The Guardian is a, a British newspaper, you know, here in England. Uh, it has a northern and a southern um, office. It's based down in London, but it's also up in Manchester as well. So I, th I kind of just thought to myself, this is the kind of thing which they do, you know, they, they kind of run articles and reviews of this kind of thing. So I just sat at my desk that afternoon and I, I just wrote a quick review, just kind of on spec, and emailed it to the editor of The Guardian. Anyway, later on that day, about perhaps a couple of hours later, the phone rang on my desk. And I picked it up and uh, this voice answered saying, Hi, this is Dan Glaister here, arts editor at The Guardian. Really enjoyed reading your article. We're not going to publish it, but how do you fancy being our Northwest Jazz and World Music correspondent? And I said, um, well, you must be kidding. And he said, no, 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 we need somebody because we've got a guy down south who's trying to cover the south and the north. He's kind of up and down on the train all the time and we need somebody in the northwest to go and review concerts for us. Would you like to do it? I mean, you think it, it was purely freelance. There was there was no contract there, you know, there was no kind of job security. But of course I said yes, I mean, it was, you know, it was quite good money. Um, and that led to five years of employment, you know, working in music journalism. 
And I, it's just incredible, really. I just look back and think, yeah, if it hadn't been for Bill Bruford being good that night, if I'd come home from that concert thinking, yeah, not that fussed about that, really, I would never have been inspired to write that piece, and then I would never have um, had that opportunity to do such a good job, you know, for five years working for that particular publication. And um, a few years later, I, I, um, I reviewed uh, a Bill Bruford DVD, uh, a jazz DVD that he'd uh, released, and uh, I got in touch with Bill via email, and he sent me a copy of it. And when the review was published, um, I sent him a copy of that, and we had a bit of email, brief email correspondence, shall we say. Um, and then a while later, I, I, I had this plan. I was going to write a book. <laughs> I was going to write a book about jazz drummers or something. It was one of these half-cocked plans that you have, you know, when you're kind of young and foolish. And um, I just dropped him a line. I just kind of sent him an email and I said, hey, Bill, um, this is James Griffiths here. You might remember me. Um, and I was wondering whether you'd like to be interviewed for a book I have in mind for a book uh, for a book uh, about jazz drummers. Left my phone number and email. Didn't think anything of it. You know, he didn't get back in touch. I didn't hear anything back, you know, via the email or anything. So I just assumed, OK, you know, he's not interested. I was just I was just sat in my bedroom one day. I used to live in one of these kind of horrible sort of garret bedrooms, sort of attic bedroom in Leeds, you know, in sort of half squalor, living in penury. <clears throat> and um, the phone rang, and I picked it up, just you know, thinking it'd be one of my mates or you know, whatever, my parents or something. And this very well-spoken voice kind of said, "Hello, is that James Griffiths?" And I said, "Yeah, yeah, it is." And he said, uh, "Bill Bruford here." And <laughs> I nearly dropped the phone, you know, I was just sat in my bedroom, Bill Bruford's on the phone. It, really amazing, you know, I mean, why why he called me, I don't know, other than, obviously, he's just a gentleman, isn't he, you know. He could have so easily brushed off the email, he could have, you know, written back to me and said no. But he, you know, bless his heart, he phoned me up and he talked to me about the project and... You know, we established quite quickly that I didn't have a publisher lined up um, and he basically said, you know, very nicely, he said, you know, my time is a bit precious at the moment, you know, but I'm, I'm quite busy, so I think I'm going to decline if that's OK. And I said, yeah, absolutely, Bill, you know, uh, it, it was it was such an honour to receive the phone call and uh, the book never materialised because one of the reasons why actually was because I found it very difficult to make contact with anybody, you know, in the kind of jazz world these people were not quite as accessible as I thought they were going to be Bill was the only person who got back to me you know this is Bill Bruford he used to be in yes you know and um, it was quite amazing to sort of you know get that phone call from somebody that I'd admired for so long I had at the time been working on Bill Bruford's uh, drum transcriptions from this book it's called When in Doubt Roll transcriptions of Bruford's greatest performances and this is amazing if you're a musician I mean not just if you're a drummer but if you're a musician of any kind, you know, if you if you read these transcriptions, or if you just look at the transcriptions, this is drum music which he actually you know came up with himself. It's quite amazing. I mean, the time signatures, uh, really stunning stuff. You know, I mean, just look at you just get a quick feel for it. You know, just very 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 complex music, going back to the Yes years. You know, King Crimson. Um, and of course, he, I mean, he didn't just play sort of untuned percussion because he did the electronic thing as well. You know, he learned how to play melodies and harmonies. He used to um, he used to use his pads to trigger different chords and so on. In the uh, original electronic version of Earthworks, the idea was that rather than having a piano to play the chords, which is what you'd normally have in a jazz band, he uh, the drummer would play the chords using um, electronic samples on the pads. And then the other musicians would basically play melody melody lines on top of what the drummer was doing. A really amazing idea, you know. The Earthworks records are quite good fun. I mean, they're a bit dated sounding now, I think. But, um, I mean, some of this music is just... I mean, even going right back, you know, to... I think the, the first song in the book is Heart of the Sunrise by Yes. And, you know, there's like groups of six notes, you know, triplets set against 4-4 four, four time, there's 9-8 time signatures, 16-8 time signatures, absolutely amazing, you know. Um, a very, very technical musician, I suppose, and um, this is his life story, this is his autobiography, and it's an extremely interesting book. 
it's quite a lot of musical theory in here. He draws upon, uh, you know, sociological and uh, cultural uh, texts, um, you know, cultural theorists and so on. Gets a bit heavy going at times, but there's some extremely interesting material in here. And one of the most amazing things in it is just the, the amount of self-doubt which comes through. And it's a terrible shame because Bill Bruford has decided to retire from music because he just decided in the end that he felt he couldn't compete with some of the guys who were out there, some of the jazz drummers, you know, the, you know, the young jazz drummers who come through the conservatory training, you know, music college, and they're, they're trained to do all this amazing stuff. And in the end, he just felt like he couldn't compete with them anymore, and he felt like he just wasn't good enough, you know. Which is a, it's a real shame, you know, it's that thing where musicians almost kind of, I think anyway, almost lose sight of the purpose of music, you know. Ultimately, it's to entertain people, it's to give people pleasure and, you know, help people to have a good time. But I think Bill, he was so interested in the technique and he was so interested in being innovative. And I, I, I don't think he was ever playing to the average person in the audience. I think he, he liked to feel like he was playing for the percussionists in the audience and for the drummers and for the musicians. He wanted to be seen to be contributing and innovating. He wanted to be on the cutting edge all the time. And I think when he realised he felt like he couldn't be on that cutting edge anymore. Uh, he just decided to hang up his sticks. Literally, you know. It's, it's a shame because I think the world needs somebody like Bill Bruford. And the amazing story of that, you know, if people don't know this story, you know, he turned his back on fame and fortune. He kind of, he did the yes thing right up until the point where they were just about to crack America and get really huge. And then he left and joined King Crimson. And the thing he always said was, he said, when, yes, we're just about to break big, he said Chris Squire thought that was the start of something. Chris Squire, the bass player from Yes, he saw that moment, the close to the edge of, uh, moment in their career, as the beginning of something. As in, you know, the beginning of kind of fame and fortune and the beginning of the stadium tours and so on. But Bill said to him, that was the end. He said, the moment they cracked America, he said that was it. I just wanted to basically shake hands with everybody and say thanks very much guys, it's been a pleasure. And all Bill wanted to do was go off and play with King Crimson and make very strange music with Robert Fripp. And he did a few good albums with Fripp and then of course Fripp disbanded, you know, he disbanded the group and Bill was left out in the cold, you know. And then he did a tour with Genesis, but you know, he sort of ended up doing TV advert music and things and it was incredible, you know, to sort of walk away from a career like that in order to, to take a chance, you know, and then it, it sort of went tits up. And then he gradually had to piece his career back together again, you know, in bands like uh, UK, and um, and then he did actually rejoin Yes, of course, Anderson, Anderson Wakeman, Bruford Howe, have I got that right? And uh, he had a couple of stints in Crimson. And, uh, and then he got Earthworks together, of course, and it all had a happy ending, apart from the fact that he decided to retire much too early. Um, yeah, a, a really great guy. He introduced me to so much music. This, um, the last thing I'm going to show you now is a jazz record that I would never have discovered uh, had it not been for Bill. And that is Max Roach, um, Drums Unlimited. Max Roach, brilliant early jazz drummer, uh, you know, bebop, you know, from the bebop era. Uh, he worked with Charlie Parker and so on. Kind of, he was one of the founding fathers of bop drumming. But on this record, he came up with a tune called The Drum Also Waltzes, <clears throat> which is in 3-4 time. 3-4 as in dun dit dit dun dit dit dun dit dit rather than 4-4 time, which is dun 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 And um, Max Roach came up with this, this, uh, this amazing drum solo called The Drum Also Waltzes, which is in 3-4 time, which Bill later recorded his own version of it using an electronic drum kit. Uh, and I'll post the links below so you can hear both versions. Um, there is a, dr a drum transcription of the uh, drum also waltzes in this as well. And I, I, I did tell myself once that I was going to learn how to play it, but honestly, you just you start reading you start reading the transcription and you and then you listen to the CD and you just think, nah, there aren't there just aren't enough hours in the day, you know. Um, but uh, Max Roach was a big, big, big hero of Bill Bruford and. You know, you can hear a lot of Roach's playing in Bill Bruford's playing. Very crisp, articulated kind of sound. Uh, ja uh, Bill always played as if he was in a jazz band. He was in rock bands, but he played like a jazz man. Uh, and that's what made him distinctive and innovative. And I think when, when Yes lost him, 
you know, Alan White's a good player, but he's, he, you know, he's a rock player, really. And if you listen, if you listen to Close to the Edge, back to back with Tales from Topographic Oceans, which is the first album that Alan White played on, I think you definitely notice that the drum part of the music is perhaps a lot less interesting than it had been with Bill. So anyway, if you're not aware of, uh, of the music of Bill Bruford, I recommend you check out albums such as Close to the Edge and Fragile by Yes. Check out the album uh, Red and Discipline by King Crimson. Uh, check out any of the music he recorded uh, with UK. Listen to, is it Seconds Out, the Genesis Live album, which has his playing on. And check out any albums that you come across uh, by his band Earthworks because Bill's music is always worth listening to. He was always very intelligent, well put together. And I think all his music demonstrated that the guy had uh, you know, a good soul and a big heart. And I still look back with immense fondness on that period of my life when I got to review a Bill Bruford concert and uh, I got an extremely pleasant five years work as a music journalist on the back of that. And I got to chat to him on the phone. So what more could a man want? So there you go, folks. The great Bill Bruford. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll be back very soon for more fun and games. Have a great weekend. Cheers. Bye.